Good afternoon, my friends. This is Paul, and today I'm going to be reviewing The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap for the Game Boy Advance. Now, I have played this game on pretty much every form that you can play this on that does not require emulating. So, I played a bit of it on the original Game Boy Advance. Um, I beat it on the original DS and the GameCube Game Boy Player. A little bit of both. So, yes, I have quite a bit of experience, and the version you're seeing right now is from the Wii U Virtual Console versions. You can see it in nice, big-screened glory without the display that's at the bottom if you try to record it from the GameCube. So, Minish Cap is the type of Zelda game that I honestly wish there were more of. It follows the same basic design philosophy that I praised Twilight Princess so much for before Breath of the Wild came out. Basically, it's the kind of game that takes what worked and kept it, take what needed to be improved and fixed it, and took what didn't work at all and got rid of it. Essentially, Minish Cap was the portable Twilight Princess in terms of its philosophy. Now, obviously, those games are very different, but they share that consensus of we're not going to reinvent Zelda, we're not going to revolutionize Zelda, we're just going to make a good Zelda game that is mind-blowing for the system that it's on. And one of the first things you'll notice is that Minish Cap is an extremely beautiful looking Zelda game. The textures and animations are really smooth, and when you're little, some of the close-ups, like when you walk past a giant leaf or an acorn, look practically photorealistic. And so it's an absolute joy to watch, especially because there's the joke of Link becomes portable, so he plays this game on a portable device. This game uses the same engine as the original Four Swords, and I really didn't like that game, but I was really surprised by how well that engine worked in this context. Essentially, the main gimmick, if you could call it that, is that Link can switch between being normal little boy-sized and minish size, which means basically smaller than even a bug. And so Link will have to switch between those two sizes in order to effectively make his way through a bunch of dungeons, get the MacGuffins, typical Zelda story. Yeah, this is the origin story of the Four Sword and Vedi from those games, which most of us don't want to speak of. And honestly, the plot is not as great as I remembered it being. I mean, it's cool to learn like, oh, so that's why Link can split himself into four in the Four Swords games. But apart from that, story's not really the big deal here. It's the gameplay that really excels. Because Minish Cap doesn't have a whole lot of brand new cool ideas, but it takes other concepts and utilizes the portable nature to a really magnificent degree. So for starters, they reuse a lot of characters from 3D Zeldas and somehow manage to make them work in this more pixelated style. So you'll see a lot of cameos such as Dr. Wright, why does he keep popping up? Um, Beetle, and even Andrew, the chicken lady, who's still just as afraid of her own pets as she was before. And this is really nice, because it's almost like a Zelda multiverse, and if people were fans of how Link's Awakening had cameos from Mario enemies, well, this game has that too. You can face Lakitus and Bobums and creatures that look like Goombas, although I'm pretty sure that's not actually what they're called. The only other major addition Minish Cap adds that sets it apart, in fact, I would say it sets it apart so much it's never been done again, is Kinstone Fusion. Basically, you get half of a rock and then you find someone else in the world, and by someone else, I mean literally anything you can think of, be it a cow, a cat, even a fragment of the wall will have the other half of the kinstone that you have. And so you put them together, and something good happens. Now, I think this is kind of weird when you try to over-logic how it works, like I do. Like, I think, okay, well, why is it that the kinstones generally only benefit Link? Like... If a chest drops from the sky carrying mysterious shells, no one else ever seems to visit the shop where you need to spend mysterious shells. So that's weird. 
but it works. It gives you an incentive to revisit areas in a clever way without feeling like it's artificial. Kinstone Fusion never got old, although on a recent playthrough I noticed that they were woefully underutilized. Kinstones come in four color varieties and I have yet to figure out what the rhyme or rhythm is of them, except that the gold kinstones are the ones that are required for story progression and the others are all optional. And this was a big bummer because besides the shrinking, this is Minish Cap's one big innovation and they hardly even used it. It's mostly just for side quest purposes. So I would certainly love to see another Zelda game attempt to use this cool new feature in a more refined capacity or who knows maybe we'll get a minish cap remake and they'll flesh out the content a lot so minish cap is actually a pretty easy and short zelda game what did you expect it's on a game boy advance it's not exactly going to be huge i would say it's roughly between the size of link's awakening and a link to the past not too long not too short it feels like the game is over when it needs to be, and it doesn't drag out longer than it has to. Not to say there aren't frustrating moments. That library book side quest was particularly annoying. And the final battle did require me to look up how to even hurt Faity on one of his early phases. But apart from that, the game mostly does a pretty good job of presenting a good mix of dungeon exploration and overworld puzzle solving. The overworld seems like it's a bit more on the solving the puzzles side rather than just, wow, look at that vista, because Game Boy Advance wasn't exactly capable of capturing mind-blowing scenery. So instead, you'd have to say, okay, well now I have this item, so now I can perform this ability, and I can get farther in the overworld. So in a sense, the entire game feels like a big dungeon, and no, it's not all dank and gloomy like the footage I'm showing. I... I'm just showing you the first dungeon because I don't want too many spoilers. So perhaps the biggest disappointment in Minish Cap for me, besides, you know, nitpicky stuff like why is it that Zelda has hardly any screen time and why does Link hardly have a personality as always, the biggest gripe that's a legitimate concern is how slow Link moves. Now, I thought that that was a problem in Link's Awakening, and while he is admittedly faster than he was in that game, I still felt like most of the game was just me pressing the R button, or ZR button if you're playing on the Wii U, to make him go faster. And I feel like that's kind of unfortunate if you're constantly mashing buttons in a Zelda game. There are also a lot of bosses that required you to just hammer the sword button over and over again. Not only that, but with the Game Boy Advance's two buttons, you can only equip two items at a time, and the Virtual Console version did nothing to fix this. That's not a huge deal breaker, but every now and then it can be a little bit obnoxious to keep switching things out, especially because 90% of the time you're probably going to want your sword equipped, so essentially you basically only have one item slot. Apart from that, Minish Cap is a nice bite-sized adventure. Oh, how many times has that pun been done? that is available in so many forms and in pretty decent price ranges that I don't really see a reason why you would want to miss out on this. It has absolutely incredible music and an in-game soundtrack player if you get all of the figurines with the mysterious shells, which is the only mainline Zelda game to do that. So definitely a good excuse if Nintendo ends up continuing to be so aggressive with shutting down music channels, so you might want to get onto that. And it also has great graphics for the Game Boy Advance, controls great, actually put the Four Swords engine to use in a good game, and overall is a good time investment. If you get it on the Virtual Console, you only have to pay like five bucks, and I would say it's absolutely worth buying for that. With that, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, anything that I might have missed, leave them in the comment section. And until the next time, keep the faith, stay epic, God bless. And don't try to shrink to the size of a bug in real life. That's uh, not pleasant, if this game is any indication. Bye-bye.